Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And then he asked also his disciples, who others say that I am? You know, personally, it doesn't sit well with me. If you hear persons asking persons, or people asking people, who do you say that I am? Or who do others say that I am? At the very outset, it sounds, to me, you know, it sounds arrogant. It's, it is a show of hint of conceit. But of course, you cannot say that to Jesus. How can he be arrogant? Uh, there must be something he wanted to ask his disciples. That Christian discipleship is a matter of, it's a long journey of knowing him better. And knowing him more. It's about, who am I to you? You know, uh, a theologian, I want to borrow the, the thoughts of this theologian. I saw this somewhere about his reflection about when he said that, there is some kind of, he call it hermeneutics of serendipity. Serendipity is, of course, no, it's an accidental thing. You have this experience and you learn out of it. And then you know this and this because of that experience. It's just something accidental. And I, I have a sense of it. I mean, you hear it often in, in experiences of people witnessing. When you join charismatic gatherings, when you join the gatherings of Oasis of Love, and you hear people sharing about their faith experience, that they have this experience, they were this before, they were in this state before, and then suddenly they have this experience, and because of that experience, they grow and mature. And then they have this faith, the gift of faith, and then you say, wow, it's, it's just like that. It's serendipity. That by accident, accident, as if by accident you know God, or you happen to meet Jesus, as if by accident. But when, when others call it serendipity, these same theologians say, perhaps it's not serendipity. He calls it conspiracy of grace. That it is by the grace of God. And in Christian discipleship, it's not by accident. Actually, what Jesus wanted to his disciples is that this is a continuous search. Yes, God is always there. And the grace of God is there. But you have to, to look for it. There must be our part of it, that we search for him. And then at the end of it, God is waiting. It's the conspiracy of grace. That's why he asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? Who others say that I am? Keep on looking. Look at Peter. He said the right answer on the one hand at the first instance. But towards the end of the gospel, to Peter, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God does, but as man. It's not easy to bridge between what God thinks and between what man thinks. And we are men. So when you say you want to think as gods, it's no easy, it's a search. It's not something uh, just over a cup of coffee, a bottle of beer, and then you have God's mind. No. It's a continuous search. You must be a man and woman of prayer to know how God thinks. It's a search. As you continue this Eucharistic celebration, it's not serendipity. It's not knowing God by accident. It's conspiracy of grace. God is there always for us. And we keep on giving it all, looking for Him, searching, because God is there waiting. He is worth the search. So let us ask that grace from the Lord then. Lord, please grant us the mind, the heart, as you think, as you love us. Lord, grant us the grace.